So the next service is the uh, rear differential. I've already removed the uh, fender guard and the, uh, the, the rear wheel. And the next thing we're going to do is remove the rear caliper, uh, remove the speed sensor, and we're going to remove this bolt in the uh, um, paralever suspension system here in the back uh, that holds the differential in place. Uh, and then we're going to remove the drain plug and fill plug, which is the same plug on these uh, here at the back, and let the, uh, the differential well drain out. So we're going to get to work, take these things off, and uh, illustrate how that's done. Okay, the next step is to remove the speed sensor. The speed sensor is held on by three points here on the rear differential that we need to remove. The actual speed sensor itself, uh, there is a uh, the, the cable that runs to the speed sensor which is uh, um, bolted to the differential. Finally this clip up in here uh, which is uh, attached to the differential where the uh, uh, cable for the speed sensor comes off of the uh, uh, paralever uh, and links on to the differential. So we're going to remove those three items. And we want to be careful not to break or damage the plastic that's holding, that's, that consists of the mount for the speed sensor. But there is an O-ring seal on here, so it may be a little, a little bit difficult to pull out. You just gotta try to pull it out as straight as possible. It's out, and now we can just move the rotor and fish it up out of the way. Put it over here with our brake caliper. So on the B, uh, BMW GS, there isn't a lower drain plug for the uh, rear differential. What you need to do is remove this plug, which is also where you're going to fill the differential from, uh, before you lower the differential. Now, because we've taken out the uh, speed sensor, oil is going to come out of the differential when we put it in the down position anyways. But this is going to completely uh, drain the differential if we take this plug out. So this plug has a O-ring on it, as you can make out there. You just want to inspect the O-ring, make sure that there's no issues with that. If you did have a leak back here, you could probably put on just a little bit of Teflon tape around those threads as well to uh, to hold that in place. So the uh, nut here on the back is uh, 16 millimeters. If you don't have a 16 millimeter wrench in your set, not to worry, it's the same as uh, 5 8 The nut's off. Now remember when we pull this bolt, the differential is going to want to uh, fall down, basically fall completely back. Um, so make sure you have a bucket handy to catch the oil and secondly is just support the, the rear differential as you pull that bolt out. That was just the washer. So as we lower this the differential is going to, splines are going to pull away from the drive shaft. We want to make sure the drive shaft stays in place doesn't come with the differential so I just reached up there and grabbed hold of the drive shaft and made sure it unplugged from the differential and now we're just going to lower it into the bucket like that and let that oil drain out so we, before we uh, put the differential back up I just want to talk about the gator here at the back. Uh, you want to inspect the gator to make sure that there's no rips or tears in it. Uh, there'll never be an easier time to change it than right now. So the gator is this rubber piece 
and then you have this plastic insert that holds the gator in place and there is a up and a down to this and basically these little hooks clip behind the gator uh, edge here and then these tabs right here uh, clip inside the housing so it goes in like so um, one of the things that uh, that you want to do when you have the gator in the down position like this is to put some lubricant around the outside edge and this does a couple things first off is it helps seal um, and by lubricant I meant grease you want to put some grease around the outside edge and it does a couple things first off is it helps protect the gator um, you know basically anything inside there the drive shaft uh, the differential splines from getting uh, dirt and water in there uh, but also uh, the other thing it does is it helps lubricate the uh, the gator uh, keep it soft and supple so that it does not um, crack from weather uh, and if your bike is in the water a lot if your bike is outside uh, then you want to make sure so just go ahead and, and, and liberally get that grease on there and then once it's up we'll wipe it all off to make sure that any excess is taken care of. The next thing we're going to do is the plastic retaining clip. Make sure it's going in the proper direction, which is that direction right there. And then we're going to insert it into the gator and uh, make sure that it's all clipped in place. Just like that. So, oh, didn't have that piece concealed. Okay, so just like that. And now the boot, the gator, is uh, ready to go back up into place. And we just have to align the splines on the drive shaft with the splines on the differential. What I found worked easiest for hooking up the rear differential and meshing the splines was to actually leave the bike in neutral. This is contrary to the factory manual. And support the differential with my scissor lift. I just used my fingers to locate and place the drive shaft universal on the differential splines and then raised the scissor lift until there was a bit of pressure on the drive shaft. I then rotated the brake rotor and the spline slid into place without any fuss. I could then use my scissor lift to bring the differential up the rest of the way so it could be bolted together with the paralever. Okay, so now we're ready to refill the rear differential. And the oil that we're using is uh, a 7590 uh, synthetic gear oil from Castrol. Now, uh, the factory manual calls for a uh, Castrol uh, XO, is what, uh, um, and basically what that is is, is a synthetic um, 7590 and, from Castrol, and that's exactly what this is. Uh, there is a lot of uh, discussions on uh, the, the various uh, forums. And really, there's no noticeable difference um, at all. There's no. Uh, if took a look at the uh, at the viscosity rates at 100 degrees Celsius on this version versus the XO, they were exactly the same. Um, I'm not really convinced that there's a necessity for anything other than uh, the type of gear oil that you can go down to your local store and buy. Um, but again, you just want to make sure two things. One is that it is a full synthetic and uh, secondly is that you have the weight right for the differential and in the case of the BMW it's a, it's a 7590. So to put oil into the differential there's a couple ways you can do it once you have the uh, the top off you can just go ahead and take the bottle and, and, and put it in there and kind of squeeze. The issue with that that I find is that air gets trapped pretty easily and uh, it, it's a little tougher to get. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the uh, filler hole for the differential, which is actually the speed sensor hole. Now remember, we've, we've taken the speed sensor out and uh, we're not put it back yet. So we're going to fill the oil using that hole over there. And remember when uh, oil starts to come out of that hole there, then we'll know that we've got enough in the differential. Now the rear differential doesn't hold a whole lot of oil. 
it's only uh, uh, 220 milliliters or 0.22 of a liter so this is going to fill fairly quickly this bottle could do you know, basically four services uh, of this type so hang on to the extra it's just regular gear oil starting to come out the uh, the inspection hole there at the back where we drained all the oil from and that's how we know we have the proper amounts in so we can stop filling it and remove the hose and when that stops dripping we've got the perfect amount of oil in So a quick tip uh, before putting the caliper on was to, if you're having any difficulty getting clearance to put the caliper back on, sometimes the pads will move a little bit on you uh, and makes it a little more difficult to, to get them on. Uh, one of the tricks you want to use is uh, I just take a screwdriver and stick it between the pads and then twist the screwdriver and that opens up the uh, the pads quite a bit what you're doing there is just pushing the pistons in the caliper back in and that gives you some additional clearance so now that the uh, the pads are spread you should be able to just set it on the rotor and it goes quite nicely uh, the other thing we're going to do with always with our caliper bolts is that we're going to use some uh, anti-seize on them uh, and just uh, just a little bit just to make sure that they don't uh, corrode in there and we don't have any issues down the road. And then the other thing that's a little bit unique about this uh, BMW is the rear uh, caliper bolt has this tube on it, which is a spacer for the uh, mud guard that hangs off the back of the wheel. So in order to align this properly, you have to get the bolt for the uh, mud guard and uh, insert it and then just kind of line everything up. You have to get a few threads of the, that one on inside the, uh, the, the caliper mount. Otherwise your, uh, your caliper, caliper bolt will tighten up and the two will be in the wrong position in order for you to mount the rear splash guard. So you just want to make sure that you've got those things um, set up properly uh, so that you can not have to basically go back and, and loosen this off and, and start all over again. So we're just gonna we just tighten this one up just a few th uh, turns just to make, get the thread started and then we'll do the same thing on the back here with this one. We want to make sure that um, we've got that bolt started before we go ahead and torque and tighten up the um, caliper bolts themselves. So now we're ready to torque these down and uh, the torque setting on these is 24 newton meters. Okay, and the caliper's back on. Now, one more quick reminder is because we spread those pads uh, and push the pistons back in, one of the things you wanna do before you trust your rear brake is uh, just pump up the pedal and that's going to then take up that gap that we created with those pistons. So those pistons will be riding basically on the brake shoes and are on the brake pads, I should say, and the, and the rotors. So uh, otherwise, if you went out and without doing that, the first time you press the brake pedal, it'll go right down and you have nothing. So we just want to make sure we take up that slack. So now the caliper's on, we can go ahead and, and uh, put the wheel on and uh, uh, finish the bike up.